welcome back to Cumbria, where we're trying to find Cazan Rigby, a house that combines town and country, home and office. So far, it's been an uphill struggle. Yesterday, we showed Cazan Rigby a barn conversion where they wanted more office space. A cottage with room for two large offices where they wanted more living space. I can even touch the ceiling. It feels, it feels quite small and claustrophobic to me and a modern semi with all the space they dream of, but not the character. As property becomes increasingly expensive, we're all faced with the same dilemma, location or space. Unfortunately, none of us have a limitless budget. We must all cut our cloth to fit our purse. But Kaz and Rigby don't seem ready to make that choice. Finding a compromised house that meets their competing needs is clearly not working. So today, we've got a new plan. We're going to show them two extremes starting in the heart of Kendall, Rigby's number one location. We're hoping it might also seduce Kaz. This Georgian townhouse is part of a large terrace, divided into smaller houses. So it's rather interesting, you come through this courtyard, and then this That's is your veranda. Yes, wow. So there's the front door. <laughs> Off to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Although this townhouse only has two bedrooms, it does have both a living room and separate dining room. It's on the market for 175,000. Now we particularly wanted you to see this one because it's right in the heart of Kendall and yes. still enjoys the rural setting that we sense that you're both looking for. Mm. We've got the ceiling height, we've got the proportions that perhaps we didn't have yeah. yesterday. It's fantastic windows. Rigby, we know this house will seduce you. <laughs> It's a, it's a done deal, it's as far a, as you're concerned. It certainly the, is. The location of it. Well, it's about 100, 150 yards from where I live at the moment, so the location is perfect. The Georgian feel of the house, the traditional features, I just think are fantastic. I mean, I really like the house so far. It's really nice. Yes. Okay. I suspect we'll have a big argument. We will have <laughs> a big argument. This is the kitchen, which is a lovely big kitchen, but I feel this would make a better office than a kitchen and that the dining room would make a great kitchen. You could have a fantastic open plan kitchen dining sitting room running through into each other without destroying any of the original features. You just put double doors between the dining room that is now and the sitting room. The only problem is the expense of moving the plumbing. Now, Phil and I discussed this and he said yes, but you wouldn't add value if you did that because you'd be changing it for your purposes. I think we're buying a house to live in anyway. We are, I yes. Mean, I know it sounds a bit naive, but we're not really thinking about the resale afterwards. So I think if we wanted to, to live uh -huh. in a house, mm. I would want to spend all my time at that end of the house. Yes. And I like being in the kitchen, so I'd want the kitchen at that end of the house. Uh -huh. That, really. Yeah. Sounds promising. Maybe Kaz is warming to the house. So, yeah, well, I think we've got a few ticks in the boxes here. We might be doing a little better. With the kitchen converted into one office, the second can go into the smaller spare bedroom. And surely even Kaz has to be impressed by the stunning main bedroom. Now, Kaz, this is the room which, if, if any, is going to captivate you, because just sitting here in this window, looking out over that view, it, it really is. It's a 180-degree view. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's a it really, really, really now, lovely view. No one's denying you're still quite in the middle of town. This is quite a good combination of both your needs. I mean, we could really easily live in this house, and I do really like all of these views, and it does give you a really good feeling of um, being in the open. But I sense a but. Um, it's just there's no, well, there's no garden. <laughs> <laughs> a bit harsh, surely. The garden may be small compared to a field, but for a townhouse, it's pretty sizable. It's up to Phil to convince her. One of you can lie here. The other one there. <laughs> so we've managed to please Rigby, but will this house tempt Kaz into town? We've got to see it when there isn't all this fantastic light coming in because we see it in such a really idealised yeah. way at the moment, don't we? Would I be prepared to leave my home to come and live here? Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah? Wow. That's a statement. Better than we could have hoped for, but we've got a sneaking suspicion Kaz is still yearning for the countryside. Time to see if we can find her dream home, and let's hope Rigby will be up for it. Thanks very much. So we're travelling into the depths of the country, to the village of Orton. I think it's this way. Yesterday you told us you were prepared to do work. 
Uh-huh. A lot more work than we'd previously offered. How much remains to be seen? <laughs> so right. now we're putting that to the test. Sounds like a bit of a challenge. Now we're in the village of Orton, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic village with a pub, a prize-winning tea shop and a chocolate factory. Oh. Which is the most important Which bit, is the most important bit. And this is the former butcher's and slaughterhouse. This was the slaughterhouse and that was the barn where they held the animals. These two ruined barns are on the market for £115,000. There's no doubt they've got all the space Kaz and Rigby need, but are they prepared to take on such a big project? It already has planning permission for conversion into two houses. We've got the plans here that have been drawn up for that permission. This part would convert into a three-bedroom house with an office, big kitchen dining room, a separate dining room and a big living room. We reckon having the barn converted would cost £80,000, but if they do some of the work themselves, it could be a lot cheaper. I love it. I'm, that's exactly the kind of project I'd really like to, to do. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Look, there's some little outbuilding. We could have a goat rugby. <laughs> <laughs> we could, could we? Yeah. Kaz seems totally smitten, but will Rigby be convinced? The location for us is a bit too far out of Kendall, really. I mean, I think it's sort of eight, nine miles, but it is a gorgeous spot. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful, and I just love it. I mean, I'd really like to take on a project like that, but it's just a wee bit too far for us. Rigby just doesn't seem prepared to compromise on distance. Luckily, Kaz is more open. She's surprised us all by wanting a serious second look at the Kendall townhouse, but will it still hit the mark? We've discovered that in Cumbria, £185,000 buys an enormous variety of properties. For a similar budget elsewhere in Britain, you could also buy... A one-bedroom flat in Putney. A seven-bedroom house in Western Supermare. Or a four-bedroom original schoolhouse in the Clyde Valley. By the time we're back in Kendall, it's late afternoon. For a second viewing, it's crucial to visit at a different time of day. It's good to be back when it's not really sunny, actually, yes. just so that we can see what it's going to really look like. This two-bedroom townhouse is on the market at £175,000. It's got all the space the couple want, but Kaz was worried about the size and the light in the garden. Can't see where the sun is, can we? No, I mean, it's there somewhere, but how far round it is is the problem. It sort of looks like it would have disappeared out of this garden more or less by sort of halfway through the afternoon. I think it would probably still be at the end, but it's definitely a morning to early afternoon garden. It's not going to get the evening sun. No. Cass and Rigby have mentioned to us they'd like to change the fireplace in the living room. Now, this is a Grade 2 listed house, so it comes with a responsibility. Internally, they would be allowed to change anything that doesn't materially alter the character of the house. So fireplaces would be allowed. However, externally, nothing can be changed without prior listed building consent. Inside, Kaz is giving serious thought to changing the kitchen into her office. See, my worry about this room has always been that it's too dark, but if the light's on, there's mm -hmm. another one there, there's another one there. Realistically, if I was going to be working in here, I would have the door open yeah. probably nearly all of the time. In fact, I'd probably have the door open as much of the time as possible, and that, that makes a difference, The other it? thing is, there's neck curtains on here, uh -huh. and if you open them, I think you increase the light a huge amount. And could Rigby be happy working in that second bedroom upstairs? Now, this room's not bad, actually. I was worried that it might be a bit too dark for an office and it would be a bit gloomy, but actually, it's very light, although it faces north. It's all sounding hopeful, but we've got a horrible feeling. I think this house, Rigby loves. Yeah. Bang in the right spot, it's got the rural views. Because I think Cass wants to live up there on the hill somewhere. Yeah, and... And Rigby wants to live here. Oh, Kirsty, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, no. We're letting Kaz and Rigby sleep on it. Next morning, it's round to Rigby's for breakfast and the final verdict. It was a really beautiful house. We loved it. I mean, the interior was just fantastic. The views were just to die for. The location was excellent. It's about uh, 150 yards from where I'm living now. I couldn't, com <laughs> couldn't ask for more at all. But it was £175,000 and we need to get more for £175,000, we want two offices. We, we would want to have some garden and we'd want to have 
enough room for us. It wouldn't have been a sensible purchase for us, really, would it? It wouldn't. And it was quite a hard decision because I convinced myself that we were going to buy that house and that we were going to live in it because I thought you'd liked it so much. <laughs> Did you both recognise as we went through the viewings houses that were big enough that might have been in the location that suited you both would have been too expensive? Yes. Is that, is that something that's, that's come out over the last three days? I think it probably is. I think the only way we could get something in the sort of, of the size and the location that we can afford, it would have to be somewhere we'd do, we'd do a significant amount of work to ourselves. You don't want to live in Kendall. Those things which are close enough to Kendall are too expensive. If and those things that are the further away from Kendall are too far for Rigby. I guess one of the things that we've learned, I suppose, mm. out of this last couple of days is I, I probably could live in Kendall if I had to. Mm -hmm. And Rigby now knows that he would not be prepared to live far outside Kendall, even if you found the ideal ruin in the ideal village. Well, we've had a great time. It's a beautiful part of the country here. Um, I think I'm off to buy that barn. <laughs> <laughs> Kaz and Rigby are still looking for their dream home, but so far none of the houses they've seen have been right either.